1031 um, from 2017. This also features uh, our guest, uh, Justin Seaman, uh, as a director. Um, it's uh, an anthology movie, so it's got a lot of directors. Uh, uh, Brett De, De, De Jaeger, De Jaeger uh, Rocky Gray, uh, Zane Hirschberger, John William Holt, Hunter Johnson, and Justin Seaman. Um, the it, the summary is basically uh, it's a horror anthology presented by like an Elvira style host uh, named Mal Malvolia. Uh, she brings you five different stories. Do you have any additional details? Uh, on it was distributed by Red Letter Entertainments, uh, and this was put out on DVD as well as VHS. Uh, this has uh, the soundtracks on CD, and it has uh, I think a couple of different posters for it as yeah, well. I've seen several. Um, the, the movie starts out and introduces you to the horror host, Mal, Malvolia, who's an actual horror host on YouTube. Uh, she has a whole channel. It felt very natural. Yeah. Uh, and I think everybody can get on board with like a, a buxom uh, yeah. horror host. Like that. <laughs> no, you weren't on that? No, no. I, 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 was, I, I thought you were going to touch on... Uh, uh, on them titties. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, no. Uh, uh, but she... <laughs> <laughs> she's, it always goes there, man. Uh, uh, um, anyway, she's showing these ki- these kids are watching this show, and uh, it goes into the first story, which is the Justin Seaman story, uh, the old hag. Uh, I thought that the old hag was the one of the most solid stories in the collection. Uh, it's it really makes you feel uneasy. I assume if you went to bed and breakfast, you wouldn't want to do it anymore because it's fucking weird. Um, I think the only thing I have to say about it is the hag would have been more effective with less makeup, but it was a dude in there. So that, um, you know, that's what it is. Uh, Trespasser was a story about a scarecrow. It was kind of confusing. Could have, would, could have probably been really good if it had a longer. How about we just I mean, we'll I, slow down a little bit? How, maybe how t- do you want to do this? Touch on each, okay, each well, story? let's talk about the old hag first. Okay. Uh, basically, the story is um, uh, these two videographers are being paid on Halloween, what, for whatever reason, <laughs> to come to this woman's house and talk about shooting an advertisement for her bed and breakfast. Um, things start going weird, and um, one of the camera- well, it was a good time to do it because they didn't have any guests on right. Halloween. Yeah, they and always mess stuff up. Yeah, so um, so the the one of the camera guys starts seeing stuff, and things take a turn for the worse. Um, it really like that whole building is really creepy. I, I can't imagine staying in a bed and breakfast. It's a very very cool very cool house. Yeah, um, and he just keeps seeing things out of the corner of his eye. Uh, weird <laughs> weird shits happening, and at the end, I think everybody dies. Right, <laughs> so, <laughs> both the dudes die, and the woman finally can get to sleep because she can't sleep. Right. Um, then you want to move on to the next story? No, I, I just want to uh, touch on a few okay. things. Um, yeah, we mentioned that we mentioned the the house, the uh, the Montgomery Mansion, um, being a bed and breakfast. I think it was a very cool setting. Uh, the house alone created some atmosphere. Uh, the old hag I thought looked great, um, and it appears to be um, like almost a full body costume. It is, yeah. yeah so I, no, I thought I thought she looked creepy. I thought it was great. Um, again, really good music. Uh, the acting was good. It had, had some great shots. I think um, being the second thing I, that I've seen from Justin Seaman, I can om- I can start to see his style. Yeah, he has a, for sure. He has a, a, a style to him. Um, I didn't I didn't like rate um, like each segment, but I, I thought for sure this was this one stood above the rest. I'm guessing that's kind of why they. They had it the first. Um, it's a good way to start the movie. Off. But I did, I did kind of rate them in my head as I was watching them, and I, I think it was almost in, in chronological order. Oh, really? As they went on, I don't know if that's the way they did that. If they intended to do that, maybe, maybe four and five switch places. But yeah, this is one of the strongest segments. Yeah, it was my, sure. it was my favorite story for sure. Jared, did you? What do you think about the first segment? Anything? <coughs> Yeah, I thought it was one of the. I think the two, my two favorites from it were um, the first one and then uh, the roller skating. Yeah, yeah, one. that was a really. Strong I, one those for me those too. are the two standout ones. And again, it, I mean, it's it's low budget horror, but it's done in a way that 
you can tell watching it, but it doesn't feel like it. Like a lot of the common things you expect from low budget horror, which is you know, great ideas and shitty made movies. <laughs> um, the, this is really cool ideas done well, just without the money to polish. So, um, and, and I think most of them. Uh, the uh, we're not getting too far in it. I think the last one was the only one that I kind of. Mm. Really? Yeah. Well, but uh, uh, but oh. yeah, the the old hag was that what it was called? Yeah. I can't remember the name. Old hag and the roller skating rink ones yeah. were definitely the two that stood um, out the most. The, the one that comes after the old hag is called Trespassers. And it's basically uh, about um, what is it? A couple that are going out to see some old scarecrow that yeah, has. They're, they're, uh, yeah, they're going. They're going. They're on a date. They go to a movie that sucked. I think they may even walked out on it. Right. Yeah. Uh, so. They want to do something else. It's Halloween. She wants to get scared. Yeah. So they go out to this old house that has a, a, a scarecrow that has lore about it. I think that this could have been fucking awesome if it was a whole full length movie. Like if they, if they had time to flesh out what exactly was happening, because I have no idea what fucking happened in this segment. Uh, aside from the thing comes to life and kills him and then he becomes the thing or what? I, it's just confusing. Um, this was uh, Zane Hirschberger's, by the way. Uh, this wasn't one of my favorite segments. It, I, I mean, it was all right. It was strong. It wasn't as strong as the old hag or uh, killing the dance, which is my favorite segment, I think. Um, but it was all right. You got anything on this one? Uh, yeah. I, first of all, I, I I don't know. I guess I love scarecrows in movies. Right. Um, I, I just think that they're creepy and they always remind me. They just automatically give you the feel of uh, fall time, Halloween. Uh, the music in this one was great. Uh, Scarecrow looked good. It was a decent story. Had some uh, some some gore to it. The acting kind of takes a step back a little bit. I think um, I think this was my set my second best uh, segment in it. Um, and I I, <laughs> I was a little confused why the the first Scarecrow had on. Um, I think I think he was wearing a leather jacket. I was like, why? Is it? <laughs> You're making a, a like a, a scarecrow, like that's a, that's a cool iconic figure, and then you put a leather jacket on him. But it like you said, sense. What, what, whoever gets killed, you know, whatever they're wearing, they they go up as a scarecrow. So yeah, that made sense. I think it would have been like if they could have taken because they had like a thing about a family, you know, like that old family that was supposed mm-hmm. to own that property. They if they would have had time to make that a whole movie, they could have done a whole fucked up weird thing where that was like the, you know, the fucking. Uh, like a whole religion around it or whatever, you know, all, all kinds of shit. But it was it was a strong segment. Um, anything else on that one? You want to move on? Anyway? Um, the, the third segment is Killing the Dance. It's, this is definitely my favorite segment. It's, Jason Turner's. It's uh, about uh, some kids or they're closing down. The, uh, they're closed the roller rec- ring for the night for like a private Halloween party, right? And um, it turns out that there's a killer in the midst and uh, what really creepy fucking cowboy costume. That was, that was the thing that really made, <laughs> made me like love it. I was like, that's a fucked up costume. And you know, to have a straight razor as the weapon and just, there's a lot of blood and crazy shit in the segment. I loved it a lot. It turns in the twist at the end of it was that it was the mother the whole time. Ouch. You know? Spoiler alert. Yeah. Should have said that beforehand. No, we uh, all of our all of our shows are spoilers. So if you don't know that by now, yeah. So what do you think about this one? Well, uh, speaking of costumes, did you did you pick up on the all the Karate Kid costumes? <laughs> no, I did. Actually. Like the well, the the Cobra Kai, they wear those skeleton the, the skeleton costumes, right. and then they even had uh, uh, Ralph's uh, shower. He wears he wears the oh, yeah, he's, he's yeah. a shower for for their Halloween thing, and, and this was even in it. So I, I thought that that was pretty funny. Some Easter eggs there, I guess. Oh, I fucking forgot about the the very. End. I forgot the mom. Okay, cool. The mom has the twist, and then there's the son who has the, blows her head up. Holy <laughs> fuck! I fucking <laughs> forgot all about that. That just popped in my head. I had to say something about it. The ma- the kid pulls his mask off, and he's like a. What do you say the proper term for it uh, is the what, thing? I have a telekinetic monster. Yeah, he's like he looks like Jason Voorhees, kind of, but he blows the mother's head up. Oh, it's fantastic. Anyways, continue, Jason. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, I thought the, the skating rink was a cool setting. Uh, it was something It was something different. You know, it takes you back to skate land. Don't see too many of them. Yeah, um, skate. But a lot of the segment was just people skating mm. around. 
for it felt it was it, it was getting to be a bit bit much a bit long just skating they around. ride the suspense but a yeah lot. like yeah. I, they, they are panning back and forth I, yeah I get it uh, the music helps pace this segment um, and yeah, it, it, it pays off at the end with uh, with the twist. Mikey, the brother, ends up being a telekinetic monster, and the mom ends up being the cowboy. Um, I think this is probably my probably the third. My you third. You see, you're literally going right. Yeah, now. like I said, but I think maybe four and five. Yeah, might be I can switched. see how that happens. Did yeah. you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, this was the other one. Um, like I said, this one and uh, the first one were kind of tied for my two favorite. And uh, this one was a was a little bit is a little bit crazier, and the payoff I thought was strong. It but had to have that payoff. The reason, the reason this wasn't my favorite is what you had said. There, there's a little too much of people. It just feels people like you're people skating. The the first one is smoother. It's more uh, polished. Yeah. Yeah, it it the the story in a whole. This one the story isn't as you know through it it is is a little gets a little slow, but the payoff I felt was really strong. So, so. yeah, and like the, the, I think what the, <laughs> the the girl that was skating around, I guess she was going to go home with that one chick. Yeah, like they just like <laughs> it was just her skating yeah. around around, but she looked good, so I, I understand <laughs> it. But yeah, it like the strong points of this one. And the weak points of this one, and then the first one, they kind of level out, so they're tied for right. me. But th- those are the two; those are the two I think are most noteworthy. Uh, the next segment is called the Halloween Blizzard of '91. Um, do you have the director on this? It's the Brett D. Yeager. Okay, this one I fucking didn't like at all. I did not <laughs> did not like it. Keep Santa Claus out of my Halloween movies <laughs> for fuck's sake. And also, decide, is it the trick-or-treating kids that are doing the damage, or is it Santa Claus? Because I need you to decide on what it is. And also, keep Santa Claus out of my Halloween movies. That's all I'm going to say. That's all you got to say? That's all I got to say. It wasn't my cup of tea. Um, (laughs) The shots from the outside of the house, uh, looking at the house, I thought looked cool. The the snow falling, obviously, I'm, I'm... they had that CG, but I don't know. I like that. That was a good shot. Um, the <laughs> the sister in law, all right, is walking around the house in her panties, and like everyone's cool with that. That's what you well, did. I think the guy almost the guy almost he was gonna he would have fucked her. Probably. He did. He was. He, yes, he did a little he bump. Yeah. He, like, well, you don't bump? walk around in your panties. I mean, that's the <laughs> that's the rule of the house. <laughs> don't walk around in your panties. Um, speaking of the Santa Claus. Um, I thought he looked really good. I thought he, I thought the Santa Claus looked better than what most Santa Claus oh, do you, in that's Christmas true. movies. Yeah, but keep um, it in the Christmas horror. I mean, put it in the. Okay, I, I can. I don't yeah, mind I, Christmas I horror, agree. but this is a I Halloween can, movie, I dude. Can, uh, yeah, I can kind of agree <laughs> with that. Uh, but yeah, I was a little confused on the story as well. Um, like, uh, Santa saves the good kids, and the bad kids. Yeah, it's like if you love like, Halloween, if you love if you, <laughs> like, I, if you love Christmas, Santa Claus is going to come and like help you out. And if you love Halloween, you're fucking dead, brother. <laughs> yeah, um, the no, the the acting is rough in this. Um, the quality dropped off. I thought quite a bit. Too. Yeah, I think I, I have this down as my my fourth favorite, but again, four and five can kind of switch places. So. Jared? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a, I thought it was a fun idea. I'm not as against the idea as Frank is. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Like, I don't. You got something against Santa? It's, I don't like Christmas at all. I mean, usually. it was it was mixed in with the Halloween. Like, yeah, they, and, and I enjoyed. They were kind of fighting all, each other. All yeah, the Christmas like, movies we watched, it's a, are great. It's a I fun idea them, but, over things we all know. Like, you know, people that like Halloween more than Christmas, and we know people who have. I mean, no one's fought about it, but <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard the conversations of why one's better. That you know, and, and it's a it's a fun idea to explore. It wasn't explored. It wasn't explored in a way that made me turn it off, but also not in a way did, that. Did you understand what was going on? <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I think the overall idea is it's just Christmas versus Halloween, uh, nitpicking the specifics of it okay. is de- is defeatist like i felt like it was right there and i felt stupid for like not quite understanding but it didn't know there was I, like, no connection I, <laughs> I don't know what happened. it's <laughs> again it's an indie low budget horror 
version of the idea of Christmas versus Halloween. I think going into it any further is... I think time restraints had a lot of, like, effect on these segments. Like, oh, we gotta get... We got this much time. Fuck. Yeah, again, and, <laughs> and like you guys was, I mean, I would switch... Uh, one and three are kind of tied for me, then it's two, four, and five. At the They're same time, of, at the same time, though, you, you only have, have yeah. to make a good movie for 15 minutes, mm-hmm. like... Yeah, so it's... It, it's a funny idea. It I was just funny, thought it was a. It was a funny enough idea that kept me entertained enough that I went right on into five. So I, I mean, see, and for me, they could have removed it and it would have made it like a much better movie. Well, let's talk about the fifth one. Uh, the fifth one is called the Sam Hain Slasher, uh, and uh, this one I'm I'm surprised you guys don't have this higher than you do because I thought it could have like if they take this they could have made this a franchise, I think. I think that character is strong enough to do that. You, did, you hear, did you hear my stomach rumble? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. wondering. <laughs> right. You get a sandwich in this guy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Lost but, it. This is a very, uh, I think it's a strong segment. Um, and I'm, I'm the, I've, th- there's a reason they use this for the, a lot of the artwork, I think, because the character could be its own thing. But you guys felt differently? What were your, what were the downfalls for those for you guys? Um. Just standard generic slasher. Like nothing, nothing, like nothing, nothing grabbed me. Um, the good, I have good music. I was lost with this story as well. Uh, between this, the the Sam Hain killer, and all the soup, supernatural stuff that happened, I got. Like, I almost felt like you know, just pick one and roll with that. You got fifteen minutes. Yeah, like just <laughs> pick, you just, only need one. The yeah. killer's cool. The killer's cool enough, and supernatural stuffs. Cool on its own, uh, so I don't know, um, and it had some cool effects. Yeah, I think a lot of the a lot of these segments people were trying to get, you know, like some of these segments in these anthologies have been made into full length movies. Like you could just watch Terrifier or whatever. Wasn't that from an anthology originally? Yeah, All, all Hallows Eve. Yeah, so it can happen. And so. uh, there's another low budget horror movie. That's, that's, it seems like that's all I've been watching lately. <laughs> uh, and I should have checked this out because. I'm seeing it on paper now. Like, I think the, the music's good in every segment. So, there it is again. <laughs> <laughs> you need some fucking same. I wonder, I wonder if maybe the, the, the same guy did the, the music over all of them. Minor. But, yeah, yeah. For, for me, it, it was the bottom. It's cool stuff and just executed in a way that was... Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know that... F- <clears throat> I don't know that four was better than five. But I'll probably switch it every time I watch it. It had yeah. a it had a more original idea, I guess, than what was going on. And um, five might make a better five would def, five would definitely make a better movie if you had a concise movie put out of it. But yeah, you know it then four. But it, it just it kind of bored me, I guess. But I give it, I give this a nine because I think it's one of the best overall horror anthologies I've ever seen. I haven't, I haven't watched a lot of them though. Wow. You you've probably seen a lot more. But I think this is stronger than Creepshow Two, and Creepshow Two is a pretty good anthology. I think. I mean, think of the segments in Creepshow Two. There's the I've, wooden I really chief. like Creepshow Two. There's the wooden chief, which, which is all right. Which is great. Which is great. What what other segments are in that movie? Well, let's not get on Creepshow. Well, yeah, I'm just saying. I liked it more than Creepshow Two. Okay, not but not more than Creepshow One, but definitely more than Creepshow Two. Uh, yeah, um, I really I really liked the uh, what, what's her name Malvolia. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they could have worked her in between each segment. I'm surprised of, they did. I think she was in the beginning and the end, uh, but no, I would I would have worked her. <laughs> just stop there <laughs> any chance you can get her in there <laughs> come on now we're professionals here. no I would have worked her in in, the, in between the segment <laughs> it would have made it would have made more it would have made more sense if they would have worked her in between the segments just uh, work her out <laughs> I apologize to whoever the actress oh, is oh hashtag me too <laughs> um, no I, I liked it I had great music overall uh, some segments were a little weak, but I think you have that in any anthology. Uh, overall, I thought the stories were good. And again, um, you know, it's a Halloween anthology, so I'm going to bring this out every October for sure. I gave it a six. 
I am with Jason as well. I too gave it a six. Um, anthologies are not high on. I'm not. I, I'm not big on anthologies. I don't dislike them, but I can't think. Trick or treat, <coughs> I think, is the only one I can think of that. I love anthologies. Yeah, I think it's the only I one give I can you a big old list of them. I think it's the only one I can think of that I've ever watched that I was like, and and nothing against the things in anthologies, but when you do an anthology as a whole, it's like anything. It's like a book or whatever. You're going to get some good ones, and you're going to get some stinkers. So, anthologies are tough to, on a whole, be like that's really good. Trick or Treat is one of the few that I like that movie, beginning to end. Um, the Halloween theme, I think, might be in it, too, because I found that this is a stronger one for me than other anthology movies, and it might be because I like the idea of Halloween stories. Love them. As a little bit. So I think the Halloween vibe works for this. So I would probably watch this again before most other anthologies that I've watched, other than Trick or Treat. Um, there, and it, But in the end, it's like... In the end, there are some that are really worth watching, but I think after you watch it once, um, there are some you won't watch the second or third time. You might I'd probably just watch them all. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> too lazy to fast forward. Yeah. Oh, so, but no, none of them were that bad. But uh, but yeah, I, I give it a I give it a six, and um, this and the barn actually, I've given some low budget stuffs five or six. These, the difference between these two, I, I like I've been scoring these more on what I would give something not considering how low the budget is so take that into consideration um i'm judging these more as the movies that aren't that low budget than like like slashers i mean i gave slashers a five uh slashers doesn't touch either of these either of these two it's it's way it's <laughs> way you know it's it's bad compared to these two i'm judging that one as a trash movie these are low budget movies that I think you can rate and compare on not not saying I'm going to forgive them for the budget. You don't have to. They're good enough. You, I, I felt they shouldn't be forgiven for the budget because they were made by people who kind of knew what they were doing. So, But, yeah, the, I gave this one a six, too. All right. Well.